For the last three decades, prescription drug prices in the U.S. have been rising dramatically. The price of prescription drugs, it's way out of whack, it's way too high. We're back now with the cost of prescription drugs, which keep rising. Huge price hikes. And insulin, the life-saving drug for many diabetics, is no exception. It's our oxygen, it's our water, it's, that, it's as essential as those things. Between 2002 and 2013, the price of insulin in the U.S. increased by 200%. This is what costs me a fortune. That's forcing some people to ration their doses and find alternative ways to get it. Somebody's got to step in. The government's not helping us do anything. Now, ordinary Americans are trying to disrupt the pharmaceutical industry by making their own devices like EpiPens and even medications like insulin. It's gonna change the economics of everything. But will it? Do these ordinary citizens pose a real threat to the status quo? Or are there good reasons why life-saving drugs like insulin are so expensive? 30 million Americans have diabetes. That's one in 10 individuals. We traveled to Jackson, Georgia to meet Karen Wofford, She's 29 years old and has had type 1 diabetes since she was 12. When my day centered around diabetes. I wake up in the morning, jumped on the bike, worked out for 30 minutes. Wofford's pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin to regulate her blood sugar. That's why she works out every day to keep it level. If it dips below that red line, not only does my alarm go off, my husband's goes off and my mom's goes off. I mean, I've passed out probably three or four times in my life. Do you think this disease is going to shorten your life expectancy? I think it probably already has. I go to sleep, you know, wondering, wanted, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. I'm not really a crier that much, sorry. That's all right. I think about, you know, like if my sugar's high, like what kind of damage is being done? Like, you know, is it going to, Damage my heart. I bet it'd be nice to just have one day in life when you don't have to think about this stuff and worry about yeah. it. <laughs> On top of her worries about the disease, Wofford and her husband struggled to pay for her medical needs on their combined income of $50,000 a year. That's why they moved in with her parents and her younger brother. Together, the couple pay $260 per month for health insurance, but Wofford has to pay $6,800 out of her pocket before her insurance payments kick in. According to the American Diabetes Association, more than one in four diabetics in the U.S. who need insulin struggle to afford it, and some are finding creative ways to get it. So there's a few different Facebook groups. It's a community that helps each other. Twitter is a great resource too. Twitter? Yes. One of Wofford's online friends sent her diabetes supplies for free, saving her more than $1,000. But it's not only diabetics. Some cancer patients who can't afford to pay for their drugs have started rationing their doses, while others have turned to GoFundMe pages where they ask for help. Wofford reveals she has another source for insulin, but he wants to keep his identity concealed because sharing prescription drugs is illegal. I heard there's a drug deal going down in here. <laughs> yeah, there's a drug deal going down in here. I'm helping out with some insulin. How do you have extra? I don't take all my insulin all the time. If I can help someone out, then that's what I'm doing. But why are the prices for life-saving medications like insulin so high that some folks turn to such desperate measures? Is it emblematic of a larger issue in our society. The problem of high pharmaceutical prices for brand name on patent drugs is not by any means limited to insulin. You're also seeing it in the latest oncology drugs. So we're seeing it all over the market. There are only a limited number of companies. They have exclusivity rights in the market. They are able to raise the prices, and so they do. One study found that insulin from two of the three biggest manufacturers cost as much as four times more in the U.S. than in other developed countries. 
and they have universal health insurance. So instead of a whole bunch of little insurers and pharmaceutical benefit managers in a very non-transparent system like we have here, there's one purchaser that's negotiating with the drug companies and basically they say, look, if you don't give me a good price, you can go away. If we want to change the rules of the game, somebody's going to have to stand up and say, we really care about this. A group of people in California is trying to do just that, offer an alternative to the medical establishment. Whoa, look at this. Let me show you the incubator where our yeast cultures are actually growing. The Open Insulin Project is doing a radical experiment. They're trying to create their own insulin formula. This quest is personal for the group's leader. He has type 1 diabetes, and so did his father, who died in 2004. Here we are working together. So you got your do-it-yourselfer spirit? I was always used to uh, that mindset of when there's a problem, you should just figure out how to fix it. One of Anthony DeFranco's colleagues is a French-trained biochemist. He's hoping the insulin formula he's trying to produce will be as effective as one of the leading brands. Why not just do it exactly the same as they're doing it? Because it's patented. It's patented? Yes. But by making it a little bit different, then you get around that? We hope so, yeah. Now, if this works, will you get a patent on your method? No, we want to make it open source. It's not about being the first one, it's about having something usable for everybody. Right now, the group's in the process of confirming whether they've actually produced insulin, which they say they're a few weeks away from finding out. You test your own stuff? Yeah, certainly I would. I don't know. There's flies where people are fermenting stuff. This doesn't seem like the cleanest place to be producing pharmaceuticals that you inject into your body. We've been able to do the same kind of work that people do in much bigger, nicer, cleaner labs. The FDA oversees the approval of drugs in the U.S. and counsels against using unapproved medications. They also mandate that medications have to undergo clinical trials before they can be brought to market, which can take years. DeFranco's group still hopes they will find a way to eventually have hospitals produce small batches of the group's insulin and sell it for as little as $5 per vial, compared to the current list prices of over $200 per vial. The list price of your insulin has increased significantly over the past two decades. Why is that? Right now, we have had to, as you know, increase our list price but our net price has gone down. Our profit from that insulin has actually declined over the last five to six to seven, eight years. Hobbs attributes this to rebates Novo Nordisk pays to middlemen like pharmacy benefits managers. Their purpose is to help negotiate lower prices with pharmaceutical companies so insurers end up paying less. But the White House says these middlemen have perverse incentives that encourage them to suggest high price high rebate drugs to patients and doctors. For patients in the U.S. to have access to Novo Nordis insulins, we have to participate in that system. We have to work with the PBMs. Eli Lilly cites the reimbursement system, and Sanofi cites discounts given to pharmacy benefit managers as reasons the cost for diabetics has risen so dramatically. But PCMA, a group that represents the PBMs, says the key to reducing drug costs is increasing competition among manufacturers. People are literally raising money from their friends and family just so they can afford this very expensive insulin. And you're saying that's all because of the pharmacy benefit managers? No, it's it's a complex system. That's certainly one part of it. And certainly we've had a part of the list price. For struggling patients, Hobbs recommends an older version of their insulin that sold for as little as $25 a vial. But the American Diabetes Association notes that this version of the drug yields higher rates of complications for type 1 diabetics like Wofford. And Wofford is tired of the uncertainty. Last year, along with 10 others, she filed a lawsuit against the big three insulin manufacturers, accusing them of price fixing. Sanofi has said the allegations are false. Eli Lilly declined to comment. Nova Nordisk disagrees with the allegations. The case is ongoing. As Wofford awaits the outcome of the case, and DeFranco hopes to produce the perfect batch, millions of diabetics continue to grapple with the cost of the life-saving drug. So it almost makes me just want to leave America. I mean, I'm, I am proud of my country in many ways, but the healthcare system has got to change. 